video is requested by Marina. Thank you for the idea. Today I will show you how to clean and lubricate the knitting machine. First I will remove all strands of yarn from the color changer. You can cut the yarn or you can unthread the machine and wind the tails back on the spools. Take the tension spring and attach it as shown in the video. Then take the tension mast and remove it. Here you can see up close. Push the metal levers on both sides of the cart reader and remove it from the rail. Remove the form computer. Now remove the deco device. Lift it slightly and slide it to the left. Now unscrew and remove the extension plate. The plate is attached to the front bed of the machine with two screws. After you remove the extension plate, the screws will stay in place. Slide the locks to the left and press the metal pin to disconnect them. First slide and remove the front lock, then slide and remove the back lock. Remove the edge springs and the trigger for the roll counter. Use the orange tool or something pointy and push the needle rail. Then take it out from the other side of the machine. To save a few minutes don't remove the color changer, find the little hole behind the machine and use the orange tool to push the other rail. Pull it out from the other side of the machine. At this moment you can remove the needles. If you want to deep clean the needles, close the latch and pull out the needle gently. When you remove all needles, place them in a jar full of surgical spirit or you can simply wash them using some dish soap, then rinse them under running hot water, they won't get rusty so easily. Then let them dry and insert them back into the channels. You have to insert the needles only with open latches. You can do the same procedure with the pushers. Raise the leftmost pusher halfway so it will keep the blocking rail from closing. Then put all pushers in working position, hold the raised part and pull them out one by one. The raised part is called the foot of the pusher. Clean the pushers the same way as the needles, then reinsert them as shown in the video. Take a paper towel and use it to wipe off the old oil. I use kitchen paper because it doesn't leave any lint after wiping off the surfaces. Wipe off the oil from the rail on the back bed too. You can see how dirty it can get. Now use cotton swabs to clean the other slots on the upper rail. Clean the old oil from the lower slot, then clean the upper slot where are the edge springs. Use cotton swabs and clean the rail on the other side. Take the orange ruler and raise all needles to clean the needle channels. If you remove the needles for deep cleaning, clean the channels afterward. Take a paintbrush and use your vacuum cleaner to clean all the lint from the beds. Over time a lot of dust accumulates, especially in the upper part next to the rail. Now you can see up close. Then you can clean the needle channels the same way. Now put all needles within the rail and repeat the same steps to clean the other bed. First raise all needles, then brush the dust away. Use the vacuum cleaner and the brush to clean the needle channels.
Remove all eyelets from the color changer, then remove the dust with the brush. Use the orange ruler and put all needles on the back bed within the rail. At this point you can reinsert the needle rails. You can use a piece of scotch tape and wrap it around the very end of both metal rails. The scotch tape will stick out and you will be able to pull out the rails easier. You can do the same to the other rail. Use a piece of cotton soaked in surgical spirit to clean the brush after each step. You don't want to spread the dirty oil around all parts of the machine. You can soak the brush in surgical spirit and brush the remaining clean or dirt from the machine. Now I'm cleaning the plastic parts on top of the beds, but you can use the same technique to clean the needles and the pushers channels. Wait until the alcohol evaporates, then lower the front bed and raise all needles. I cleaned the brush, so now I will drop several drops of oil on it. Gently lubricate all needles with the brush. They don't need to be oily, they only need a tiny film of oil to protect the surface from corrosion. You can also oil them on the underside. Don't lubricate the hooks and the latches, spread the oil only over the stems of the needles. Then put the needles back to the rail. Raise the needles on the back bed of the machine. Drop a few drops of oil on the brush and repeat the same steps. Don't put too much oil because the oil will attract more dust. You must have one brush only for cleaning the machine. Use the orange ruler to put all needles within the rail and raise the front bed. Now we have to lubricate the rails. I'm making a thin zigzag line of oil with the needle on the bottle. Now I'm lubricating the lower rail. If you can't attach a needle to your oil bottle, you can simply drop 5-6 drops of oil along the rail. And we have to repeat this procedure on the other side of the machine. If you find it difficult to raise some of the pushers after you clean the channels, you can drop a little bit of the oil into each channel. If you have a needle mounted on the bottle, you can do it very quickly. The needle does not allow much oil to drip into the channels. Less than a drop is needed in every channel. You can even use an oily brush to oil the pushers. Don't forget to wipe the surface with a paper towel to remove the excess oil. And of course, you have to do the same procedure with the pushers on the back bed. Sometimes they are harder to move because while knitting, clint from the yarn constantly falls over them and the channels get dirty easily. If you have needles that are difficult to move, you can drip some oil into the channels, but before that make sure the channels are clean and the needle isn't rusty. If you have a rusty needle, you can remove the rust with a bowl of aluminum foil or a metal brush. Clean the brush from the oil and use it to remove the dust from the edge springs and the trigger for the roll counter. Then use a piece of cotton soaked in surgical spirit and clean them. Use the brush to remove the dust between the tension discs. 
Then I will wipe the surface with surgical spirit. They are shining like brand new ones. You can clean the extension plate using a piece of cotton soaked in surgical spirit or even you can wash it under running water. If you choose to wash it, you have to wait until it dries off completely. Clean the deco device using surgical spirit. Then use the brush and very gently clean the inside. You can use an inflatable mattress pump to blow the dust out. Drop a few drops of oil on the metal parts and spread them evenly using a clean brush. I will spread the oil over the metal parts inside very gently. The oil will protect the metal parts from corrosion. Nothing special about the card reader. I will remove the dust using a clean and dry brush, then I will clean the surface with surgical spirit. Now let's clean the locks. This is the back lock. First take a sewing pin and clean the brushes. Often the yarn fibers are wound on the bristles of the brushes. Now take the brush again and remove all the lint. This is the pump that I use for cleaning. Pay attention to the left side of the screen. The air will remove the lint from the places where the brush can't reach. I even found a small ball of yarn. First I will lubricate the moving parts of the gels that hold the feeding eyelet. And now I will drop several drops of oil on the metal parts of the lock. Clean the brush from the dust and spread the oil over all metal parts. There should be a thin film of oil everywhere the brush can reach. Now clean the brush again. I will drop a few more drops over the parts in the middle of the lock because they are moving when you move the NX lever. You must be able to move the lever easily. Now I will clean the front lock. You have to follow the same steps. First remove the dust with a clean and dry brush. Then clean the brush from the dust and take the pump. The air will blast the remaining dust particles. And now let's lubricate the lock. What about the oil? You can use any silicone based oil that is safe for plastic parts or use Bellador oil if you can find it in the area where you live. The locks mustn't be oily, there has to be just a thin film of oil to protect the metal parts from corrosion. Clean the brush again. Return the tension masks to their places.
take the back lock and slide it on the rail on the back bed. Now you can see from a different point of view. Now slide the front lock on the rail on the front bed. Align both locks and push the metal pin to connect them. Slide the lock back and forth several times to spread the oil on the rails. You have to notice how easily the lock is moving, you can even see it in the video. Place the edge springs on the rail and slide the trigger for the row counter on the front bed. The trigger for the row counter has to be between the edge springs on the front bed. To insert the edge springs you have to push the black pin and slide them on the rail. Place the edge springs on the back bed the same way. Take the extension plate and screw it to the left side of the front bed of the machine. Slide the deco device as shown in the video. Attach the card reader to the rail. And your machine is ready for knitting. And one more thing. Cover the machine with a piece of cloth when you don't use it. I sewed this patchwork cover from scraps of fabric. That's all for today, thank you for watching, have a nice day and see you in my next video.